All right, we'll get started now, guys. Good afternoon and good morning, and welcome to session two of our three part series um, looking at the Alloy Partner Enablement Program for Yellings Teams Rooms. For those that don't know me, my name is Scott Young, and I'm the Product and Services Development Manager here at Alloy Computer Products. So in today's session, what we're going to do is look at how we choose the right solution for a Microsoft Teams room. We now know there's lots of different options out there on the market. There's Android, there's Windows. You know, what do we need to look for when we're, we're scoping out a, um, a piece of equipment for a particular the different room types. All right, so just looking at the agenda today, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at Teams Room licenses because they have changed um, quite a bit recently. So we'll have a quick look at the Teams Room licenses. We'll look at some of the differences between Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows and on Android. We'll look at the different camera options that Yalink have available. Also look at the audio options. We'll go through um, a bit about the room design considerations, and then we'll finish off with a um, Q&A session. Now, if you do have questions throughout the session, feel free to put them through to the, the Q&A or in the chat panel itself, and we'll get to it um, as quickly as we can. If we don't answer those questions throughout the presentation, we'll get to them at the end of the session. All right. Let's start with the Microsoft Teams Room licenses. So recently, Microsoft made a change with their licensing structure, and they moved away from uh, the standard and the um, professional licenses, and they've now moved through uh, to the basic and the professional licenses. So, you know, what does that mean when we're looking at, at room solutions? What does it mean when we're scoping out a room um, for a client? What do we need to make sure that they have on the back end in Teams? You know, we need to make sure that they're running the, the correct license for the equipment that we're looking at scoping for those rooms. So some of the major differences between Basic and Pro is being able to support a scheduling panel. So a scheduling panel will sit outside of your meeting room space and it allows your employees or your, your visitors to um, check and see whether a, a meeting space is already occupied or whether it's available. And it also allows us to you know, create ad hoc meetings and, and stuff on the fly as well. So if we are gonna look at using a scheduling panel throughout that um, meeting room spaces, we need to make sure that we're using pro licenses for that meeting room. Another um, key thing is traditional whiteboards. You know, do, we, do you have whiteboards already being used in that meeting room space? If they're now moving to a to a team's room uh, meeting space and they want to utilize that whiteboard in their collaboration um, within those meetings, we need to make sure that that room can support what we call a content camera. The content camera will allow us to actually take a, um, a video feed from the whiteboard session and input that into the meeting. If we need to use that, again, we need to look at using that pro license. Another key element between the, the two licenses is advanced meeting engagement options. You know, being able to use some of the new features from Microsoft like front row, even being able to use dual screens. You know, if the meeting space that we're looking at scoping out is going to need two um, screens because of the size of the room, again, we need to make sure we're looking at, at pro license. And lastly, one of, another, one of the other key features is the intelligent audio and video, being able to do transcribing and stuff, being able to utilize Yale Link's um, M speech uh, device, uh, speakerphone, I should say, um, for meeting, um, meeting room requirements. If we want to use that type of speaker, we want to use AI features in our cameras and our mics, we need to make sure that we're using the Pro license as well. Now that just covers a little bit of the, the differences between the two licenses. If you do want to look at the, the full comparison, um, we can do that from the uh, Microsoft website. And I have provided the link in this um, presentation, which we will share at the end of the session as well. All right, Windows versus Android. Now, the Android devices have come a long way over the years. 
Now, initially, when collab what they used to call collaboration bars were first introduced into the market, it was single screen. It was 720. There was no content share. They were, you know, they were really suited for small huddle room solutions. Now, Android devices have come a long way. The features between an Android device and a Windows um, Teams room device are nearing parity. Parity. There's not a lot of differences between using a Windows device or using an Android device. Now, another announcement that was made from Microsoft just recently as well is that the actual look and feel of a Windows-based MTR user interface is going to actually be um, upgraded to look like the Android-based um, interface that we see today. And that is a nicer looking interface, and I think it's a bit more intuitive than the Windows-based um, interface. So that's a, a good thing that Microsoft are doing. Another thing that we need to look at, you know, whether we're going between Windows or an Android-based solution is the size of the room. So the Android-based devices at this point in time are more suited for your focus, your small to your medium-sized rooms. You now, Yarlink yeah, have a few different options um, in the Android space, but the largest you're going to go to is probably a medium room. Another thing to look at with with that room size is, you know, the speaker quality and also the mic pickup. So with some of the Android devices from from Yaling, yes, we can add additional mics, but it still not might not be big enough for that that room size. Another uh, big differentiator here is the room control. If you're looking at adding room control into your meeting room space. At this point in time, there's no um, way to, to utilize that room control and, and build it in to, a, to an MTR solution using Android. It needs to be done via a Windows-based Microsoft Teams room. And lastly, which does come up quite a lot, depending on company policies, depending on the security of the organization, you may not be able to actually use Android devices in your environments, and you may have to go for a Windows-based solution. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind and make sure you're kind of scoping that out as well when you're, when you're looking at um, deciding what devices to use for your customers' deployments. All right, moving on. Okay, let's start, look at, start looking at some of the um, camera options that are available from Yalink. So one thing that we need to kind of consider when we're scoping out what camera is going to be suited for the room size that you're using is how's the room laid out? Like, is are we using a, a rectangle table? Is the camera on the short end of the table? Is the camera on the long end of the table? So some of these these kind of um, uh, kind of components need to be considered when we're looking at what camera to use. So you only have a, a, quite a few different um, types of cameras, some with narrow field of view, some with a wide angle field of view. So we need to make sure that we're selecting the right camera for the right layout of that room. So in the example at the, at the top there, we're using a UVC 86. It has a narrow field of view on the main optical zoom camera, and it does have a wide field of view for the secondary camera. So with the UVC 86, it kind of does cover both scenarios, but with the UVC 86, the only way that you're going to utilize both cameras is whether you, if you're using um, picture in picture mode, where the secondary wide angle view lens can be used to kind of capture the entire, uh, entire meeting room space, but the optical zoom camera will be used for kind of like auto framing or speaker tracking, presenter tra tracking, you know, AI features such as that. Now, if we want to use a, um, you know, if we're, if we're working from the long edge of the table or if we've got a different room layout like the, the bottom image there, we can go for like a UVC um, 40, which has a, a wider field of view. And another thing um, with that is also the A20, A30, the A10, the Android bars that Yarlink offer also have a wide field of view as well. So they're, they're suited for that type of room layout as well. Another thing to, to look at is how far away is the table from the camera? Because if you have the, the camera too, sorry, the table too close to the camera, even though it might be a long table and it's a big room, but if that table is too close to the camera, if you're using um, something like a UVC 86 or a UV, UVC 84 with a narrow field of view, 
you're going to be too, the camera's field of view actually, you know, it starts off narrow and goes out to 80 degrees. So if you have that table too close, you might cut, cut off the participants that are sitting at the front of that table. So as I was saying, field of view plays a big part on um, in the decision of what camera you're going to use in that meeting room space. Another thing, optical zoom. Do you want to be zooming in on people's faces? Do you want to be looking around the room? Do you want to be showing product um, displaying on a table or something like that? If you do want to do that, then we need to use an optical zoom camera that we can also configure presets as well. So being able to com configure presets so that the camera zooms in automatically on a certain space in the room. Um, it's another consideration to, to look at as well. All right, so what cameras or devices does Yaling have on the market? So I'll quickly look at the, the Android-based solutions. Yes, they are all in one um, Microsoft Teams room devices, but we're looking at kind of the cameras that are that are built into these devices when, we, when we're looking at this today. Um, so all of these devices um, all have built-in cameras. They all have a wide field of view. So great for those smaller to medium room sizes and great for when we're kind of aligning that or setting up that um, conference room table with the long edge to the TV and to the camera. Uh, the A10, 4K camera, four times digital zoom. Again, 120 degree field of view, electric privacy shutter, which is great. And it also has all of those AI um, tracking features that I've been talking about. It's got your auto framing, it's got your speaker tracking, it's got picture and picture um, and, and different AI features like that. Also has noise cancellation, cancellation and an all-in-one design as well. Moving on to the A20, it has a 20 megapixel camera with eight times digital zoom. So this is where we're looking for that kind of smaller to, to small medium um, room type. Again, we've got that 120 degree field of view, electric privacy shutter, same AI features as the A10, um, and again, an all-in-one design. And then we, we move to the kind of um, medium size uh, meeting room space with the A30. So it has two cameras. The two cameras, again, kind of used similar to the UVC 86, where one camera will be used primarily to um, focus on uh, the video stream going into the meeting, whereas the secondary camera is used for AI functionality, unless we're using picture-in-picture -picture mode. Again, the wide-angled um, camera, eight megapixel, four times digital zoom with a 120 degree field of view. And then the optical zoom lens, so the larger lens on the eight, on the A30, has an eight megapixel camera, uh, ten times hybrid zoom, so it's three times optical and three times digital. And this time it has a narrower field of view. So again, another kind of um, thing to look at when selecting an A30 over an A20 um, for those different room spaces. Again, electrical privacy, um, shutter, AI tracking. Um, noise cancellation, that all-in-one design as well. Kind of the beauty of Android devices being that all-in-one, easy to set up solution. All right, moving on to the kind of USB connected um, cameras from Yearlink that will that are primarily used with Windows-based MTR solutions. So starting from the low-end kind of huddle room solution, we have the USB 30. Not um used a lot these days because it's kind of been taken over by the uvc 40 the all-in-one kind of solution with the uvc 40 um normally kind of fits the purpose of a lot of the rooms where uvc 30 might be um utilized but looking at the uvc 30 4k um ultra hd usb camera 120 degree field of view and three times digital zoom now this one the uvc 30 does lack AI features and only supports the auto framing um, functionality. Moving on to the UVC 40, as you can see from the image of the UVC 40, very similar to the A20. Looks identical, yet the A20 has that built in Android operating system, and the UVC 40 is just a USB connected all in one device. So, again, we have that 20 megapixel um, camera, eight times digital zoom. 
100, it's actually 120 degree field of view. I made a mistake there. It should be 120 degrees. We also have auto framing and speaker tracking on the UBC40 as well, and eight built in microphones on this device and the electric lens cap as well. Now we move into kind of the medium to large room solutions with the UVC 84. So this was the first camera or first optical zoom, full optical zoom camera that, that Yanlink released to the market. This is a 4K camera, 12 times optical and three times digital zoom. And as you can see, we have that narrow A degree field of view and we have basic AI features on this camera being auto framing only. All right, moving on to Yaling's latest and greatest camera, the UVC 86. This is a very, very popular camera in the market. It has exceptional video quality and features to back that up as well. So looking at the, um, the first lens on the camera, that's your optical zoom camera, 12 times optical zoom, 4K, 90 degree field of view. The secondary camera, again, used uh, mostly for AI functionality, but also used when um, utilizing picture in picture mode as well. So, the secondary camera 4K again, but now we have that wide field of view, 120 degrees field of view for capturing those, um, that entire kind of conference or boardroom table. Um, now, with this camera itself as well, lots of different AI features auto framing, speaker tracking, presenter tracking picture in picture, um, the, the list goes on. They're bringing out more and more AI features as well. They've now released multi-focus framing as well, which is allowing us to capture individual people in a meeting room as well. So for example, sitting around a boardroom table, we might have three, four, five people sitting around a boardroom table. To make it more collaborative for those remote participants that are joining that meeting, rather than looking at a boardroom table with five people sitting around it, it actually captures the faces of each of those five indiv individuals and puts them into the video frame as an individual feed. So this allows, allows us to be more collaborative and it stops the remote participants feeling kind of left out of the discussion when they are talking to each other as well. So that's a great new feature that Yarlink have recently released. All right, now we're gonna move on to the audio options that we need to consider when, when um, designing our room and working out what equipment we need to use for our, for our room. Now, when it comes down to mic selection, you know, there's there's quite a few things to to consider. The room itself plays a big part on what type of mic we should use. Now, when we're talking about rooms that might have concrete floors, they've got glass windows, it's kind of an echoey room before we even put audio equipment into it. This is where we really got to, got to consider what mic we're going to use. Going for a ceiling-based mic in an echoey room is really not a good option. Now, there are mics out there on the market that are ceiling based that are built for situations like that. But when we're talking about the Yalink kit, going for a ceiling mic in a really echo environment is not a good option. If it is an echoey room, we're better off um, sticking with a tabletop mic. Now, when we talk about tabletop mics, we do have a few different options. We have a wired tabletop mic, and we do have wireless tabletop mics as well. Um, looking at the wired tabletop mic first, the VCM34, so three built-in mics up to six meter pickup, um, Cat5 and also cascadable as well. So it's Cat5 from um, the mic to the camera or to a PoE switch, and we can actually cascade multiple mics off a single mic as well. So that's also really important when we're running, you know, if it's a larger boardroom table, we need to run multiple mics. We don't need to actually run separate Cat5 cables back to a PoE switch. We can actually cascade those mics together. Now, one thing with, um, with cabled based mics. So I, I always, you know, wireless mics have become a big kind of thing in the market. They are great, they're very handy. We can keep our, keep our um, tabletops clear, we can move the mics around the table. 
one thing to to kind of note on this you're never going to get a good as as good of voice pickup with a wireless mic than what you are with a wired mic if you can get away with using a wired mic customer is happy to to run cables or potentially drill holes in boardroom tables always go for a wired mic not saying the wireless mics aren't great because they are and the audio pickup on a wireless mic is fantastic and it gives us flexibility to be able to move those mics around, take them off the boardroom table when we're finished to declutter the boardroom table, but you're never going to get that exact audio clarity um, that you do with a wired mic. Moving on to the ceiling mics. Ceiling mics are a great option. Up to eight units can be used on a single yelling kit. This time with the ceiling mics, they're not cascadable. They do need to be connected individual, individually back to a PoE switch. Whereas with those tabletop VCM34s, they are cascadable up to six units. VCM38s, star configuration, individually wired back to a PoE switch, but does support up to eight units. Now with those wired mics, both the VCM34 and the VCM38, both of these mics are PoE powered as well, which is great, meaning no power needs to be run to those microphones. All right, moving on to the, the wireless mic types. So we have two different mic types that are available from Yalink. We have the decked based mics, which I will mention now are actually going end of life. Um, I'm not, don't have an exact time frame yet, but they are looking at being phased out and being replaced with the um, VCM36 Wi-Fi mics. But with those um, deck-based mics, the CPW90 deck-based mics, deck te technology, greatest audio technology there is in the market. No interference, nothing, no um, issues with um, congestion in, a, in an area as well. Deck was built for audio. It was built for phone systems. Yalink being a, um, a company that has IP phones and been doing IP phones for um, 15, 20 years, audio is their strength. So being able to utilize that deck technology, only manufacture with deck based mics in the market, I should say as well, but these mics are great. Up to four units per system, three meter voice um, pickup, built in batteries are great as well, 11 days standby, 19 hours of talk time. Now the kit with the CPW90s does include two mics and that charging base as well. Now, moving on to the Wi-Fi mics. The Wi-Fi mics are individually purchased. So it's one mic in a kit, six meter pickup. So a, a larger pickup range than the, the CPW 90s. Better battery life. So 14 days standby, 24 hour talk time. Again, charging dock as well. And supports up to four units as well. I missed that number four in that text there. Supports up to units. That should be up to four units. Now, one good thing with the VCM 36s. Now, depending on the hardware that you're using. So, for instance, if we're using it with an Android bar, so uh, A20, A30, for example, we can actually utilize these mics as an expansion mic. So we can actually utilize the internal mics on our A20, A30, but also use the um, VCM36-W mic as well. Now, in a lot of um, cases, when you are using um, additional mics on um, bars and things like that, that mic will actually take over the entire kind of voice pickup. The mic inside the bar will be disabled and will utilize the mic on the table only. But with the VCM36-W, it does act as a true expansion mic. And just to mention as well, there is a new mic coming out onto the market very soon from Yalink, which will be a VCM35. That will be the new addition to the tabled base mics. And it will look very similar to the VCM36-W, but it will have a cable um, hanging off it as well. And those mics will not be cascadable. That will be a single connection back to a PoE switch. All right, looking at some of the audio options and speakers from Yaling. So speak, uh, Yaling do have a very limited 
offer when it comes to speakers. They do have the M speaker too, and that is basically it when we're utilizing kind of a separate speaker and mic um, solution. So we have the M speaker too, um, 10 watts of power. Again, though, one thing that's great, PoE powered, Ethernet connected, and the systems can utilize up to four speakers in total as well. Now, the other option um, for the Yaling Windows based kits is the M Speech speakerphone. So, this is an AI based speakerphone, three built in um, MEMS mics, six meter voice pickup, full duplex technology, and also those AI features I kind of talked about when we're looking at the different um, license, type, license types. So we can do tra voice transcription with the um, M speech, and we can also do Cortana as well. So, hey, Cortana, start meeting, stop meeting, add uh, Horace to the meeting, those types of things. So having those AI features built into the M speech is also a great feature. Now, what happens when we have a large room and the mics, the speakers that Yalink are offering aren't going to suit the room that you're looking at fitting out? Great, we have, a, we have a solution. We can actually connect the Yaylink kit to third-party audio devices directly to DSPs. Now, when we need to do this, we need to be careful on what system we use. Android-based solutions do not support DSP connectivity. We need to go for a Windows-based solution if we do need to utilize um, DSP-based audio or third-party mics and speakers. Now, two options here. So Yalink have what they call the AV hub. Now the AV hub is allowing us to connect multiple cameras into a Microsoft Teams room solution. But what it also does is give us RCA in and out options and also USB connectivity to a DSP. So if we are gonna USB, uh, use sorry, a DSP, we need to look at utilizing the AV hub. Another option is the UVC 86. This is the, these are the only two options that support connectivity to a DSP. So with the UVC 86, it has a USB A port on it and a USB B. So the USB B port will connect back to your uh, or to the M core, and the USB A port can be used to connect to a DSP. Now, when we look at the AV hub and DSP connectivity, we can't mix and match. So if we're using a DSP, we can't use ceiling mics from Yalink and then use DSP-based speakers because we lose that kind of audio control. We have no echo cancellation anymore. However, if we are using Yalink mics and we're using the RCA out of an AV hub, we can do that because the AV hub will be doing that audio control and echo cancellation and, and whatnot. So that's also another thing to keep in mind, making sure that if we are using a DSP, we're using it like we're supposed to, and we're using it for mic and um, speaker connectivity. All right, looking at some of the room design considerations. So, I kind of talked a little, little bit about this before when we're talking about mics. What are the materials materials of the walls? Floors, ceiling. You know, if we're using glass, we've got concrete floors. These types of rooms are going to cause a lot of reverberation um, or echo into the room. So we need to be careful what mic type we utilize when we are um, fitting out a meeting room space with kind of flat um, areas. So concrete floors, glass walls, etc. Another thing we need to look at, how or can we at all run cables from the front of room to the table? Now with the Yaling kit, one thing to mention, all of the audio components of a Yaling kit connect via their cameras. So the UVC 84 or the UVC 86 has an ethernet port on the back of it, which will connect to a PoE switch where we will then connect speakers and mics if they were wired speakers and mics. So all of that audio needs to go through that camera. So if we're running tabletop mics, we need to be able to run Cat5 cable from the tabletop back to that camera. That's another thing to consider. 
Now, with the um, core components of an MCR that Horace touched on last week, we've got the M-Core being our compute, running the, the Windows Teams room application. And then we've got our touch panel that we use for meeting control and content share. That, again, is another CAT cable that we need to run, depending on where you install the M-Core, potentially from front of room to boardroom table for that M-Touch control as well. So that's another consideration. Another thing to look at is where will components be mounted? Where are we going to mount the speakers? Where are we mounting the cameras? Can we get Cat5 cable to all these areas? One great thing about the Yellen kit is it is all Cat5 or Cat6. We don't need to run power to each of these locations as well to power on our camera and um, a cable for connectivity. Everything's done from a single Ethernet cable. Existing audio, do they have existing ceiling speakers? Do they want to utilize those? Or um, do they have ceiling mics? Do they want to utilize those? You know, these are all considerations you need to keep in the back of your mind when scoping out a meeting room. If they do have existing ceiling speakers and they do want to use them, what? how are they connected? Does it go into an amplifier? Does it go into an existing DSP? All of these things need to be looked at and considered when we're scoping out these meeting room spaces. Displays, do they have a single display? Do they have dual display? If they've got dual display, what Teams room license are they using? We need to make sure we're using a pro license because a, a basic license isn't going to um, support dual screen. So all of these different things need to be considered along the way. All right, so we kind of um, looked at certain meeting room spaces. We've, we've looked at, um, you know, there's, there's obviously small huddle room spaces, there's medium room spaces, small room spaces, large room spaces, training room spaces, all these kind of meeting room spaces can all be catered for by Yalink equipment. Now, one of the things that has, has come up a lot over the last couple of years when we're scoping out Yalink equipment for customers is the visible rooms. The customer has a large room that gets split into and, and is used as two separate uh, meeting rooms when they are smaller. When it's a large um, meeting, they need to um, expand that room into a single room and then still utilize the same um, MTR uh, kit. So Yalink have um, come to the party with this. They've, they've found a solution, which I think is a great solution. Um, so now what we can do is we can actually utilize two MTR solutions or Microsoft Teams room solutions. So it could be an, a, two MVC 860s or something like that um, in each of the, the single kind of rooms. And then by using AV hubs in each of those rooms, we can now combine those rooms together. So each individual room will be a complete Microsoft Teams room kit. So it might be an MVC 860, but utilizing an AV hub as well. Second room, identical kit. We might be using ceiling mics and M speakers in each of those rooms as well. Now, what we can do from our control panel on the M Touch is we can now create a divisible room option. So we can actually keep them as separate systems, or we can combine the two systems to make a single Microsoft Teams room solution. Now, when we do this, there's a couple of considerations that we need to we need to look at. Now, the Yalink audio audio that is being utilized has to be at the capacity of an entire single system. Meaning, if we have one system that has six mics, the second system has six mics, when we combine those rooms, we've now got 12 mics. A Yalink system does not support 12 mics. It only supports eight ceiling mics. I'm talking ceiling mics here for in this example. It only supports eight ceiling mics. So we can't go over that upper limit. So the maximum we can have is four in each room. Again, same with the speakers. The uh, first room might have three speakers, second room has two speakers. Again, not going to work because we're going over the upper limit of a single system. 
we can only have a maximum of four speakers. So we can only have two and two. That's one thing to consider when we're using this type of um, solution. Next thing, it has to be Yaling audio equipment. You cannot do this with a DSP. Now, when I say that, you cannot do that with a DSP and change the rooms with a single click from the mTouch. You can, however, use control and let the DSP come, um, separate the rooms, but then it would be a two-touch kind of solution to do that. You would need to click combine room on the mTouch, but then, then also flip to another uh, page potentially to come or to separate or combine the audio through the DSP as well. So it can be done, it would just be a two-stage process rather than a one-stage process if we're using Yalink Audio. From the diagram you can see on the right hand side there, as you can see, when it's a, a single room, it's got an entire kind of um, separate Yalink kit, as well as a touch panel, which isn't being displayed on that image. And in the second room, similar thing. But then what we can do is combine those two rooms. One M core gets basically uh, disabled, and that AV hub on the second system basically acts as a PoE switch. And then the first system will detect the camera, mics, and speakers of that second room, combine them all together, and we can use it in a, uh, a single uh, Teams meeting room space. All right, next up is room control. When we're looking at scoping out a, a project for a customer, what do they need? Do they need room control? Do they have automatic blinds and lights and things that they want to utilize with this system? At the moment, Yaling themselves do not have a control system. Their systems do not have that capability built into it. But what we can do is we can integrate the Yaling system into third party control systems. As we can see on the, the slide here, at the moment, Yearlink do support AMX, QSIS, and Extron room control devices. Now, when we integrate the Yearlink system to these types of control systems, what we're effectively doing is creating an additional flip page on the um, M-Touch panel, which points to a pre-configured um control page that we've um, already created on that amx qsys or extron system so all we're doing is pointing to a html page um, which will then give us that complete control of the room so you can see a few examples there from amx qsys and extron as you know we can configure those um that control room control page with you know might only be um, the audio that we're controlling. It may be full room control where we, we are controlling blinds and switching inputs and things like that. So it's all capable. It just needs to be done via that third party room control system. All right, guys, just to finish off, what I'm going to show you is a great tool that Yalik released um, probably midway through last year. And that's what they call the Yalik Room Configurator. What this allows us to do is to be able to scope out what type of equipment we're going to need to use when we're looking at use, utilizing Yalink for our meeting room spaces. So on the Yalink room configurator, it gives us an option to select the room size. We can then go in, select the room size. We, we go for a small room, for example, and then we can select what kits are going to be suited for that room size, what additional audio we might need, um, what cameras we're going to utilize. So all of that can be done from the room configurator. And not only can we do that and it gives us a pretty picture, it also gives us a tabling diagram. It gives us a bill of materials. So it's really useful for you guys to kind of um, go in there, especially at the start when you first kind of you know, moving forward with the Yaling kit and starting to deploy Yaling kits more and more, it's great at the start to be able to use this uh, Yaling room configurator and be able to work out exactly what kit is going to best suit the room that you're scoping out. So what I might do quickly is this, I'll stop my presentation and just quickly 
show you the room configurator. Let's see where this is going to take me. Give me two seconds. Sorry, I wasn't prepared, uh, which I should have been. All right, so what we will do is click on the URL that I was sharing in the presentation before. Um, and from here, we can select what type of um, system we're utilizing. Now, in you know, for this um, presentation, we're talking about Microsoft Teams. So we'll click on Microsoft Teams and click Next. Now, one thing with this room configurator is you don't need to be signed in to use it. But if you are signed in, you can save these layouts. So you can keep these layouts for, for uh, future reference and be, be able to go back to, you know, a typical layout that you might use, go back, pull the bill of materials out, send it through to Alloy for a quote, and away you go. So let's look at a large room. Um, so we select the room type that we might be using. Click on Next. Now the, um, the system gives us a range of different um, equipment that is going to be suitable for that room size. Now, what we'll do is we'll go for a kit that actually doesn't come with any audio. So we'll click on that. Actually, we'll go to 860 because it supports better AI tracking features, and then we'll click Next. Now we can select what mic and speaker options we need. So for a room this size, let's say we want to have three of the tabletop mics. As you can see on the um, table itself, it actually lays out the mics on where they'll be. So if I unclick that and go to the ceiling mics, and we might go four ceiling mics, Oop, two ceiling mics on this. Okay, it's saying two only for some reason, maybe because of the room size, it only thinks we need two. But as you can see also, again, on the ceiling, it's now showing us the ceiling mics that we've selected. And then we might go speakers, we'll go two speakers on this as well. And now we can see that we've got the speakers up the front beside the TVs, we've got the camera in the middle, and we've got our two ceiling mics. When we click on Next, we can add an additional Teams room panel if we wanted to. It's going to now change the image, show us the Teams room panel on the outside of the room. We click on Next. We've got our additional accessories, might be uh, mounting options, might be cable options, etc. We don't need any of that. Um, we click on Next. Now, once we finish that, you can see we get an image of the room layout. We've also got a wiring diagram showing us how everything connects together. And not only do we have that, we also have a seating diagram showing us the mic that we've um, deployed, what coverage we're going to get on that type of that, that kind of table size, and also the field of view of the camera as well, and the speaker coverage. So it's really great to kind of make sure that we are scoping the right kit for that right um, that right room. And then lastly, what it's going to do, it's going to give us a bill of materials. So it's got everything listed from here. It's bill of materials. We can just copy that, send it to our Allo rep, and away we go. Now, one thing I was saying, this save proposal will only be there if you are signed in. And to sign into the Yellink website, it's quite easy to create a, um, a partner account so you can then access and save these configurations. Now, what I might just do quickly is I'm going to start over and I want to show you one more thing um, before we move on. Let's go for a U shaped room. This time we are going to the USA. Oops, sorry. Let's go to the 86. Hang on, something's not liking me. Let's go to the large room for a second. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you the DSP audio option. But let's go to the 860 uh, with no audio, and then we have that DSP option. So it gives us the option to kind of configure a system running um, with DSP audio. We click on next. It's telling us that we, you know, we're going to use a Biamp Shaw QSIS um, DSP. So it gives us speakers, selling speakers, gives us images of, of mics. So that's your Shaw mics, ceiling mics. And we're going to use a couple of wireless presentation dongles. Click next. Yeah, room panel is going to go on there as well. We have mounting kit. This comes with the camera already. That's why it's selected by default. 
click next and again we get those that complete kind of um, summary of, of the equipment that we need wiring diagrams as well um, and then setting diagrams as well for those mics and um, speakers that were selected now it doesn't go as far as being able to select what third party mic and what third party speaker but it does give you an overview and kind of gives you um you know at least a an option to be able to select that and be able to, to see what it would look like, especially from the wiring diagram side of view. All right, so we'll go back to the presentation. My guys went to the start. Oops. All right, well, that's actually it. Back to um, Q&A time. All right, guys. Um, does anybody have any questions that they would like to um, to bring up? If you have any questions, you can either raise your hand or you can put it in the chat panel. Um, or I can unmute you if you do want to um, happy to get off. Come online. No questions? Yes, Gavin, what we'll do is, so what we do with these sessions normally, Gavin, is they do go on, our, on the website and on our YouTube channel, but we'll look at sending out the um, slide deck as well to all the participants. All right, so Karina's just asked, the AV hub is needed for the combined room kind of scenario. That's correct, Karina. So if you do want to um, utilise that combined room um, uh, system, then we do need to use two AV hubs. So basically one AV hub becomes the master and the second one becomes what they call the switch because it's kind of taking the smarts out of the AV hub and it's just been acted as a, or acting as a, an additional POE switch to connect those different peripherals to the main system. All right, let's give it another minute or so, see if anybody has any more questions. Thanks, Gavin. All right, Olaf, there's no more questions. We'll finish up. Now, do look out for our third and final session with, um, with this series, which we will be repeating this series, just so you all know. Um, but the third session will be... Good question, Horace. What is the third session? <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's a, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit more technical. So it'll be basically That's a deep dive. To... That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Nice one. All right. So watch out for that, guys. That's um, next Thursday, same time, and that'll be more of a technical deep dive into the um, Yellowlink session. Oh, sorry, Yellowlink equipment. All right, guys. No more questions. We'll finish there, um, and we'll talk to you all very soon. Ah, oh, Roberta, just sorry, Roberta just um, actually corrected us. It's going to be the out-of-box experience for Android devices, Windows devices, meeting boards, et cetera. So it's a really good, going to be a great session on really, you know, finding out what needs to be done once we get a package delivered. What do we need to do to get that system up and running for our customers? So that should be a good session as well. Thank you all. We'll see you next time.